We recently spent way too much time and money working on this absolute nugget Yaris. With the Wrecker engine and eBay Turbo, yes, we had a lot of fun until we blew it up on the racetrack. And the exact moment that that happened is right there. So our time with Yaris Hilton is up, which means we decided it was time to kick off our next challenge. Now, last time we did this, we had $3,000 each to buy a turbo car, but this time we're upping the stakes. Now we've got a budget of $10,000 each to bring a car to the table that will dominate the other in a series of challenges, which you will get to choose. The only rule this time is that the engine is not allowed in the front of the car. It's always an exciting day when this space is empty because that means it's the beginning of a brand new project or a brand new series. And a brand new project is what is about to roll through this door because Marty has gone and picked him up something very special. He's had this car for a little while, but it's been in storage. And of course, he will be attempting to challenge me in a very similarly powered car. I can hear it. You can hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Marty's new Yaris. What? Oh, well, yeah, it's a black. Toyota. So same, same, right? What do you think? Oh, you know I don't like these, so don't ask. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods and the start of a new series and the shock announcement that Marty has another Toyota. Another Toyota, I know. Who'd believe it? Tell uh, us everything, Martin. After all the work we did on the last black Toyota that ended spectacularly, this is my new slash not so new Toyota that I bought a little while ago, just on a whim. Literally, someone said it, it's like planet a sea, they're like, oh, MR2s are cool. And then it just echoed through my head. Who told you that? I don't are you know. still friends with that person? I think I am, but I think they like Toyotas and you can't trust those people. No, anyway, they're very special. Through the night, and then I woke up the next day and I went, I need, I got, I need to experience it. Oh, you need to do it. And so I, I, I went on car sales and I looked at MR2s and I went and looked at two or three of them and they're all naturally aspirated, they're all white, they Boo. all had target tops and Boo. they're all rusty. Boo. And I'm like, I do not want a rusty car. I didn't really want a white car either. Um, and then the, a few nights later, I was falling asleep again and my phone went bong and it was a notification on car sales because someone had just posted a new one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. And first thing in the morning, seven o'clock, I rang the dude and said, I'm coming to have a look. And at 8.30, I was there at the Central Coast. Yeah. And by 10 o'clock, I was back home with my new MR2. Wow. Yep. That's impressive. And so you were sold hook, line and sinker. Because for the same money that people are asking for naturally aspirated ones, this is JDM, hard top, GT, which means turbocharged. How much was it? Factory turbo, it was eight grand. Eight grand, okay, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. I, when I was younger, I did actually like these cars. Like I thought they were, like they kind of look cool. And this is, I understand, so you're doing like a Ferrari lookalike, right? That's what this project <laughs> no, is. But yes, people do use them for that. Uh, but no, I'm not doing a Ferrari lookalike. Um, I, I just, I think it's an interesting car. People give, yes, the first thing people are going to be writing is snap over steer. Like that's, they've got a reputation as, as, as changing ends too easily. What? Did you write something on my car? No. That changing ends what too easily say? because... What, is, what does Mr. Poo mean? Because the idea is that because there's not much weight what over the front. Why does it say Mr. Poo on there? Over the oh back. no, it's MR Poo is what it says. They have a reputation for snap over steering, so that's why some people say MR2 suck. Other people say MR2 suck because they're weird cars that don't make sense. Other people say they're really hard to work on. Um, there's not much room in them. There's all these things that are sort of weird about it. But the engine is here. What do people who love them say about it, Martin? We've heard about what See, the haters that's say. that's the thing. What do they what, reckon? What I noticed is there's not that many that come up for sales. Do you know why? Because once you own they're one, all broken and no. Crashed. Once you own one, it's like you you're an MR2 person for life. Oh wow! Most of the people I've met since that have them have owned them for years and years. I know people that have like 450 kilowatt ones. There's an MR2 that does roll racing like every week and usually wins. Like they are capable. Are you an they're MR2 just fan a for bit life? Weird. No? Nah. No. I'm okay. not, but I am interested in the quirkiness of it. I'm interested that it's different, that it's unusual, that the motor's in the back. Like, what's with the, the motor's in the back? Look at this. That's it's in the cool. Boot. That's cool. Now, this is officially not rear engine because the rear would have to be past the wheels. Is this called mid engine? Is I, that. Yeah, mid ship. Is, is that what someone's going to tell us? Mid ship engine. Yeah. Now, why did Toyota do it? 
I don't know. Probably just because they could. It was the early 90s, man. They were experimenting with stuff. Now, there was an MR2 from the 80s, the AW11, which is also a really cool wedgy, boxy looking thing. Um, this is an SW20, so this is like 91 to 99, approximately. This is aftermarket, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a pot. It's got some aftermarket filter on it, okay. but it's and basically... Is this, a, is this a bleed valve? It's got a bleed valve on it. Okay. And I think it's got some kind of exhaust on it. Now, apparently this used to have a V6 in it. Really? Yeah, because you can swap uh, V6s from Camrys into this into this shell really easily. Shaft engine bolter. Swap. No, uh, for, I think I think. But this engine, three S GT, is really famous. It's the around the same era that WRXs and GTIRs and yep. all these other rally cars were going crazy. This motor was in the Celica GT4. Oh right, okay. That was dominating in rallies. So it's a screamer. It's a solid a engine. It's a solid engine. They they over engineered them because they had to survive rally. Yeah. Uh, so this is very capable, and um, with some minor fixes and work and modernisation, you can turn it into a really nice, reliable thing. Um, the shell has been paint repainted. Uh, I believe it, it was always black, but it's been painted since. It's a reasonably okay paint job. There's some little bubbles of rust and stuff that are that are sort of popping through, but overall it's not bad. It's obviously, it's dusty. It looks um, good, man. We have, we have water restrictions in Sydney at the moment, so you actually are not allowed to wash cars um, using hoses and things, so You're allowed to use a bucket to wash your car. Yeah. Um, it looks I've, good, man. I've been storing it inside anyway, because it is too good to let just rot. And, is there um, a radiator in the front? Uh, anywhere? Yes. Like, you know, like Lotuses yeah, yeah, have yeah. a radiator here, and then, it, like, what is in here? Yeah, so it's there's lots of weird stuff going on about So the, the release to pop the... Where the engine is. Did this is car used to be red? No, the front bar used to be red. Okay. So it's got a different front bar on it, so it's probably been crashed at some point. So in the front, you've got oh, your brake, wacky. brake master cylinder, and you've got a spare tyre, a battery up, a new Century battery in it. Um, and then, yeah, there's some cooling stuff going on in the front, and then big long hoses that go through to the back. So, um, so is the cooling, is it venting from here and cooling back there, or yeah. is it actually cooling here? No, the, the, so the radiator is in the front. Air goes through it, and instead of having radiator hoses that long, you've got three and a half yeah, meter long wow. radiator hoses. So it can be a bit of a pain to bleed. Yep. This one's been quite reliable. I haven't driven it a lot. Um, it's it's unregistered, and but it seems to work quite well. Like there's some weird thing going, something weird going on with the ABS, which is apparently is quite common. Okay. Um, and a few other small things like the alarm totally sucks. It goes off all the time. Um, the interior is a little bit trashed. I mean, like you've got some like a ciggy butt brain burn, and you've got some split stuff. So like. There's some things about it that are a little bit yuck, but actually, it, they're really comfortable and they're really oh, like. Oh, it is very fitting, comfortable, isn't it? Yeah, like it, it's a nice. It's actually quite a nice place to be, and because the bonnet drops away so much because there's no engine in the front, you can see really easily. You yeah, can see yeah, the road. It's, yeah. a, it's a weird feeling because you can't really see bonnet. It just looks like the windscreen just buries into the road. Yep. Um, and yeah, like someone's put a short shifter in it. It's got a nice steering wheel on it. There's some good stuff going on. Okay. Stereo, etc. The stereo is good. Martin, I think it's a strange purchase for you, but Isn't that it? doesn't surprise me that much. It is a bit. It's a bit strange, but I mean, there's something. There is something about them. Okay. And that's why they're popular. And that's why people hold on to them. And look, they're not. They're not slow. If you if you do it right, they're not slow, and they do. They're really nice to drive. The snap over steer thing. Yes, it's scary, and that's probably why you don't see heaps of race cars like this. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's a thing. There's one way to find out, I suppose. It doesn't run totally properly now, though, does it? Like, it's been given no love. No, yet. It, it's in. Like, you haven't touched it. No, I haven't. It's in need of. Yeah, it's in need of some, some cleaning up, which, to be honest, is one of my favourite things to do. Like, it's already a good base, it just needs some modernisation. Like, similar with a GTIR, it was just small things to make it turn it into a really, really nice car. Yeah, yeah. Um, because these are, I think these are worth saving, particularly because this is a GT. It's yeah. a little bit rough. But it's, a, it's rarer, it's an import into Australia. It was never actually sold here originally from a Toyota dealer, although you could buy them here, which is good because now you can, you can still get parts. Yep. These are dirt cheap in the UK. They're dirt cheap in America. In Australia, they're expensive. I that is expensive, why. really, for it what is, it is. It really is. Um, you could get the same car in the UK for you know maybe the equivalent of three, four, half the price. Really? In America, even less again. Wow. So, Is there a bit of JDM tax on this one, though, because it's like a special Japanese one or something? I think so, and I just don't think they come up very often. You know, it's like trying to find those sort of slightly rare unicorn cars. And I was really happy I managed to get a JDM Turbo hardtop. I didn't want the, the, the dramas of a leaking roof, yeah. which is the biggest problem that the target top ones have, where you take the panels out of the roof. So yeah. this, one, this one doesn't leak. And the funny thing is it's got a boot, then the engine compartment, and then it's got a frunk at the front. A frunk? A frunk. Is that what you call it? A frunk trunk. So that's an, this is an actual boot? That's an actual boot. And the release really? for that is here somewhere. So you don't have to just yank on it. There yep. you go. 
See in the boot. Oh, that's actual, that's actual space. Yeah, and it came with some spares too, which is awesome. So there's some, come with some spare shocks and a few other bits and pieces that I can use to, to fix it up. So that's what I like to do. I just like to sort of, you know, do a bit of work on it, fix it up, make it drive properly, make it reliable. Um, it should handle really well. It's got a weird combination of wheels, like 17 on the back. It's got a staggered setup, so 17 on the back and 16 on the front, but they're like a different shape. Right. So, is that the way it's meant to be? A staggered setup for MR2s is quite popular because okay. apparently it's best for handling all the weights right. over the back, all the tractions at the back. So that's the argument. I don't really know. I kind of would prefer, I think, them to look the same or find some other wheels. But um, you know, clean it up a little bit, make it work, enjoy some choo choo, and it should go pretty well too. I mean, this should be making 100 and something kilowatts all day, every day, without okay. too many mods. Okay. Um, there's a, there is an intercooler in there somewhere on one of the side vents, but I mean, that could probably be improved upon as well. There's lots of, there's lots of things, lots of possibilities. Mm. Does it excite you even 2%? I did, like about 15 or 20 years ago. A lot of people that have been watching Mighty Come Ones for ages would probably know, like I've only driven one of them, mm -hmm. uh, and the whole interior of it, did I tell you about this? No. The whole interior of it, I spent a bit of time in one, was built out of fiberglass, and it was fluoro yellow and had skulls, and their mouths were open, and inside there were speakers. So it was like it was like a show car, you know, from back a lot in the of day. So got into this was like cars. late nineties, yeah. early two thousands. I kind of like them. I kind of don't get it. It surprises me yeah. that you like it because yeah. I thought I thought you were going to get an RX seven. To be honest, Let's oh, just... I'd love to do that one day. But yeah. they're even more unicorn than these. Yeah. yeah, honestly, they are. Like this is sort of one stage newer in terms of the old series one RX sevens are now worth four times what this is which is unbelievable in itself. So this is what you brought to the challenge, Martin. Yeah, man. This is it. Engine behind you. This is pretty good in terms of engine being behind you and not costing the moon. Okay. And you obviously, I mean, you're obviously not going to bring this to the fight if you don't think it's going to win. Oh, like, dude, you're the, confident that two this litre, will. Two litre turbo, JDM, good handling. Like, this is a pretty versatile car and it is rear drive, so you can have some fun with it. But you genuinely believe it'll beat my car, yeah, right? Yeah, come on, man. You actually do yeah, that? Yeah, it's like 30 years newer or something, isn't it? Yeah, but think about newer. all the engineering, man, that's gone into it, and all the time, and like, proper race car. Everyone knows know? this kind of, this, this proper race car. This is a race car. Look at it, it looks like a race car. It's two doors, engine in the boot, engine, like, I don't know. I just think it's cool. More doors than fast. mine, actually, isn't it? That's really? true, that's true. Um, so, maybe, should I go get my car then? I mean, it's a fairly simple challenge. $10,000 budget, rear engine car, and then they'll go through a series of challenges. And this will win. Once they worked, of, of, I don't know, skid pans, drifting, sure. yeah, racing, whatever. Whatever. pull stuff. All of the above. Um, so how about I go get my car, and then you can decide for yourself which car is actually, um, like, it's a pretty easy decision, really. But look, I kind of like it. I'm just surprised that you own it. But I give it a three out of 10. I picked the best tool for the job. This is the best tool for the job. You we'll can bring see. a fancy looking hammer, but this is a Swiss Army knife. Is it? Yeah. Okay, but you see, a Swiss Army knife, if you need to cut your way through the forest, I'd rather a machete, just one thing that does everything better. Are you gonna use a, a bottle opener in the jungle? Yeah. Why? Take some sweet ginger beer out there. Okay. To the jungle, All right. so okay. have a nice so drink to have. I'm gonna get my car, hang there, I'll be right back, and I'll show you the winner of the $10,000 rear, not rear, mid engine challenge. Just hang with me, people. All confidence until I win. Because I always win, because I pick the best cars. That's just how it goes. And this car is going to be freaking awesome. I might even use my own hoist. I'm going to put this on my hoist. No more of this being under black Toyotas on my back on concrete. I'm going to put it in my shed and he can do his thing on his thing. Me and Mr. MR2, I mean MR2. It's going to be awesome. It'll be so good.